Our story begins in the midst of an eclipse. Beneath its serene light, humanity undergoes a drastic transformation as a species. Some witness their skin and flesh turning into grass and wood, resembling tree zombies. Others experience metals overflowing from their bones, akin to victims of a construction accident. These individuals, alongside other mindless humans transformed by an unknown catalyst, roam the lands. Amidst the chaotic spread of this unprecedented crisis, one can't help but wonder if there's still a place of ease and comfort in this horrifying world. Even our protagonist wonders why he has been so leisurely and carefree under these circumstances. It's as if he is not afraid of those monsters called the Darksiders. The answer is simple. He too is transformed, but not in the way most people have. He is transformed into a piece of land in some random woods. He can't even wrap his head around his ridiculous fate. How will he go anywhere if he's currently a stationary mass of dirt and soil? Everyone else retains some human-like properties. It's as if he's the only exception. Our boy kicks one of his feet out in frustration, and the land where a dark cider was walking shoots up. The poor thing, covered in tree matter, trips on the unexpected lump in the ground. This ultimately results in Tree Guy's face getting impaled by the reinforcement iron bars sticking out of another dark cider's back. A burst of black liquid starts leaking out of Tree Guy's forehead. A wound that would have been fatal to normal humans is visible. He looks for someone to blame, and that happens to be Steel Guy. Although unintelligible, you can hear the anger in his mumbling. Our protagonist, essentially the cause of this conflict, quickly washes his hands of all responsibility, blaming the Dark Sider's bad temper for the quarrel. Transformed or not, it seems like other people cannot detect his existence at all. His perception and state of mind are also degenerating, as if he's starting to become nothing but a piece of land in totality. This kind of transformation can't be any different from a death sentence. Accepting the crappy cards that fate has dealt him, he decides to lie down obediently as a farewell to this apocalyptic world. Not far from where he decides to accept defeat, a lady is running for her life. A cute student with green hair looks flustered as she has been running from monsters for quite a while now. She is starting to doubt if there are even any normal humans around anymore. Her run brings her to the piece of land where our boy is waiting for his death. He sees a sign that life might still be worth living under her skirt. Yes, his state of mind is degenerating bit by bit, but a glimpse of the booty could repair any kind of mental issues. He realizes that there is no use in waiting for death lying down. It's about time to stand again. But he gets too excited and accidentally trips someone above him once again. The cute lady lands face first. It's quite a gnarly fall too. Our boy cannot move. The girl is fine, but he just feels a revelation come to him like a gospel. That sensation belongs to one of the three great desires that humanity has. His heart is practically bursting with joy. It's the vestige of life. Proof of being alive. It seems like even in his ground form, there are still feelings that could remind him that he is still human. While he is relishing the beauty of human complexities, the girl has to push herself up. Getting banged up out of nowhere is not a pleasant experience. To make matters worse, looming shadows are starting to close in. The metal and wooden darksiders have finished their bickering to lock in on a mutual living target. They might have fought earlier, but seeing and taking someone completely vulnerable is at the top of their priority list. She knows she cannot outrun them with how close they already are. The only thing that the lady can do is scream as loudly as she can possibly muster. Our boy is finally out of his dreamland. Controlling the land with his authority, he points his fingers downward. The ground beneath the Darksider duo suddenly caves in out of nowhere before they can reach the Maiden. He does not like that these monsters are struggling and shouting straight into his body without permission. Closing his hands and manipulating the dirt to close up, he wants to instill a lesson that Darksiders are not allowed to touch normal humans. The ditch that opened to trap the mindless mobs starts crushing them bit by bit, swallowing their bodies a little deeper. There must have been some type of miscalculation. Darksiders that have adapted to their transformations are no joke. These two possess enough strength and tenacity to break out of their burial site. It is a tough struggle that shatters all of our protagonist's fingers. He might not have a sense of pain, but these guys can actually cause him some harm. A darksider that was taken over by a dead tree. A darksider that transformed into steel reinforcing bars. The two of them sure are tough cookies. If he wants to subdue them effectively, he needs to move with a little more finesse and prudence. First, he must get the lady to safety. To do that, he makes an artificial downward escalator using a moving land elevation. Once he gets her situated in a much safer spot, he employs some more security measures using the ground above as cover. The lady is dumbfounded. The soil around her is behaving so fluidly like quicksand, but it seems to be actively trying to cover and protect her. It is an absurd thought to think that a patch of land is helping her, but these are absurd times they are living in. Our boy has realized a few things in his current circumstances. The land does not speak and does not need to attract attention. But that does not mean that he has lost his temper as a human. 
With his Darksider form cropping up, he proudly declares that this will be his territory, for he is the territory. For the first time since turning into land, it seems like the two monsters have noticed his presence. His hostility pushes Steel Guy and Tree Guy to make a move against the land itself. They try to come in with some weak standard punches that do not even appear to be effective at all. Darksiders like these two are indeed the lowest ranked transformed monsters that have lost their intellect. They do not even have the vaguest idea just how thick and heavy the land can be. A tree trunk stops after making an insignificant dent. The reinforcement bars come close, but even their stronger material is not enough to pierce through. Now they are basically sitting ducks, their primary weapons stuck on the stalwart land. To deal with such idiots, just shifting the weight of the land should be more than enough. Focusing the density of the land in his hands, our boy shatters their weapons and sends them flying due to the excess impact. Their landing pad has already been decided. These two are going back into the grave that has been dug earlier. After landing in the deep ditch, our protagonist does not even give them another chance to force their way out as the ground instantly closes. A few seconds later, it is as if the Darksiders and the fearsome trench on the ground do not even exist. Since he's the land itself, our man thinks that burying the Darksiders actively bringing harm is part of his duty. He did something great today. But the person that he saved, the girl crawling out of his improvised safe zone, should leave this place the first opportunity she gets. No one can detect his existence after all. It is a sad and lonely way of living. He just wants to see that thing that gave him the will to live again. He wants to recall that feeling of being human for a fleeting moment. His daydreaming is interrupted by the lady calling his attention politely. She crawls all the way to where his consciousness is and asks if he is her savior. He cannot believe it. He asks if the girl can see him if she can feel his vague form. She actually does not. At least she would not describe it as seeing per se. She just seems to be able to feel him. As far as she was concerned when his presence was near, there was a thick and heavy sense of security in the land and the surrounding. For the first time since turning into a patch of land, he feels seen and heard. He grabs onto her hand as if his biggest fear in the world is losing grip. Our boy does not mince his words at all. He directly asks the young lady to stay here and live atop his body. She reacts the way that a normal person hears such a ridiculous proposal. He introduces himself as Lee Chung Yin. He happened to be passing through these woods when the transformation occurred. As a result, he became the literal piece of land itself. According to what he knew thus far, the world no longer has any safe places since the eclipse happened. The Darksiders have taken over and are attacking normal humans everywhere. But Li Cheng Yin still has his human intellect. He also has the ability to adequately protect the lady. It would be easy for her to get attacked running around alone. She needs someone to ensure her safety from now on. He might have spilled some valid points, but those are just excuses. There is only one important reason why he does not want her to go. It is because she showed Li Cheng Yin a new reason to continue living. He wants her to have a reason to stay too. He pleads for her to remain by his side. He says so much so fast suddenly that it is kind of hard for her to understand everything he just spouted. In a few words, he promises to raise and support her. Now it is much easier to digest his intentions. Her name is Lu Luo. She can feel the sincerity behind Li Cheng Yin's every word. Moreover, she is going to need a better place to hide from the gruesome Darksiders anyway. He takes that as a yes to his proposal. It's time to go and find her a shelter that would be dark cider proof. But before that, she notices something that merits some concerns. She feels the sensation in his right hand and asks if something is wrong with it. Even Li Cheng Yin himself has not noticed it yet, but his right hand is starting to shrink and shrivel up. It feels like something is being sucked out of his body and his hand is showing signs of drainage. He spreads his sensation all throughout his body and detects some bizarre plant spreading its roots under his skin. This menacing purple plant with an unusual growth rate could be a dark cider that he has never seen before. The two attempted to walk in the direction of the mysterious plant, but Li Cheng Yin was starting to bottom out energy-wise. Lulo was deathly worried and asked if he was okay. Of course, he would put up a tough front even though his body felt like it had been emptied out. The culprit must be absorbing his power somehow, and he was positive that they were going in the right direction. She stopped for a moment. An idea popped up in her head, but she was not certain if it would be correct. Without explanation, Lu Lo stuffed two of her fingers inside his mouth, shutting him up in surprise. It felt heavenly. So heavenly that he thought that this could not be real. Getting a cute girl's fingers stuffed into his mouth was an otherworldly experience. But there was something else to its magic. In just a few seconds, the energy that was drained from his body was recovered. His countenance also appeared to be healthier. The magic did not really come from Lu Luo's fingers. It came from the fertilizers that she fed him. It was a Hail Mary idea. But it worked. Since he was dying of energy deficiency earlier, there wasn't any time to explain. But he was a student from the nearby agricultural university. 
she just grabbed whatever supplies she could grab before escaping. She was not expecting them to have use so soon. She actually dropped most of the supplies on the run, but she picked them up on the way back here. Luluo was lugging a large sack of carbamide, something that Li Chengyin was clueless about. He properly thanked her for saving him from the brink of total deprivation. She might just be his fated lucky star. However, the effect of the fertilizer was short-lived. His hands started shriveling up again like an old man's. The problem hasn't been solved yet. They must quickly find the source before it's too late. Based on Li Chengyin's decrepit trembling, it looks like they don't have much time left. After some time, they finally reached the vicinity of the mysterious plant. The two decided to scout the situation behind some foliage first, just to be safe. This little purple plant that's only a few centimeters long was actually capable of absorbing Li Chengyin's essence at such a drastic rate. Luluo had never even seen something like this plant in her university. The scary explanation would be that plants can also transform into darksiders. That theory has a high possibility of being true. But Li Chengyin was supposed to be a whole piece of land, so how can a single stalk thinner than an arm can suck him dry? Maybe it's time to see just how tough it is and what sort of secrets it is hiding. Li Chengyin manipulated the soil around the plant, twisting the landmass around its base. The purple plant let out a toot sound once it noticed that something was up with the ground. Alerted to what was happening, the purple plant immediately uprooted itself, revealing dozens of gruesome spheres riddling its massive and complex root system. Each sphere looked more disgusting than the last, especially in the center area. He assessed that those were probably giant tumors growing along the roots. Moreover, the roots themselves are tough. Even the power of the land was unable to crush them. Lulo identified those things as rhizobium attached to the roots of a leguminous plant. Rhizobium helps the leguminous plant to absorb nitrogen from the atmosphere. It basically has a mutualistic relationship with the plant. That means that even if this thing stopped absorbing nutrients from his body, it would already be self-sufficient. The power of the land is useless against the toughness of the roots. He could not think of anything else in his arsenal that would help. Now that the plant has noticed their presence, all they can do is dodge and weave against those vicious root attacks. Upon revealing more of its root system up to the surface, a few corpses surfaced along with it. It was the tree and iron bar darksiders that Li Chengyi buried earlier. It looked like they were about to become sustenance for the mysterious plant. But that wasn't the case. According to Li Chengyi, there was an aura coming out of the darksiders that normal people couldn't see. That aura flowing out of the corpses steadily traveled toward the plant itself. After feasting on that mysterious power, the signature looks of a dark cider fully bloomed where the flower's pistol was supposed to be. Along with its sickeningly oversized rhizobium, the thing has turned into a real transformed monster, a full-on dark cider. It eked out another one of those toot sounds before priming one of its roots to attack. The root was sharpened at its tip and was traveling at incredible speeds. Its destination was Luluo's heart. Our soil boy was not going to let that happen, though. He jumped right in front of her, shielding her body with his. It pierced through his stony body, cracking his chest into tiny pieces. It might look bad, but at least the girl was safe. That strong penetrating power is even stronger than those two human darksiders that he buried earlier. Lulo saw how such a deadly natural weapon made a hole in his body and felt helpless. The plant intends to follow the piercing attack with a bludgeoning one using the dense lumps. He screamed at her to escape while she had the chance to do so. When the ball sack finally descended from the heavens, Li Chengyi's quickly crumbled, breaking under the blunt force. Again, it might look bad, but these kinds of external injuries won't kill him. But with how badly outmatched he was, that won't last too long. The only thing that he could do was at least buy the lady some time to make a run for it. He yelled at her for the second time, insisting that this was his own personal matter. If he involves Lu Luo in this insanity, how can he even talk about protecting her and living together? She felt his genuine sentiments down to her core, but she was still just standing there. He shouted one last time that she should not look down on the attacks of a dark cider. His shouts fell on seemingly deaf ears. Four root attacks were already heading for the motionless young lady. She responded by pulling out vials of green liquid from her agricultural bag and dousing the plant roots with it. The plant monster was surprised and felt the pain creeping up from the doused roots. It unleashed a shrill scream as the roots that were supposed to kill the young lady quickly dried and disintegrated. Although Luluo doesn't know much about dark ciders, she knows plants. This one they're facing seems to have a very powerful absorption ability. That's why she decided to bust out a dose of industrial-grade herbicide for the enemy to suck on. This is an original solution that hasn't been diluted, so it's one of the strongest out there. Under the light of the perpetual eclipse, the plant's roots started withering at a rapid rate until everything crumbled and shattered into dust. The diluted herbicide that it absorbed from the roots quickly traveled throughout its whole system, dissipating its once powerful weapons. What was left after that was a single stalk of flower diving right down to the ground. 
Just a few moments ago, this thing was unleashing some menacing toot sounds, and now it's shivering pathetically. The only explanation was that it had somehow lost its will to fight after one gigantic setback. Lulo has also calmed down now that Toot Toot has surrendered. Yes, she already gave the flower a name. Toot Toot lifted its head and carefully lifted its own fruit as some sort of peace offering. Li Chengche remained vigilant. This thing in front of them was still a dark cider. Who knows what goes on inside the minds of such creatures? The young lady wasn't 100% sure if it was safe. She might not know about dark ciders, but she always likes hanging out with plants. Compared to the transformed humans, Toot Toot's thoughts were easier to understand. The innocent smile on the flower's face was quite a giveaway that didn't mean any harm. To show its surrender even clearer, Toot Toot decided to lower itself into the ground, prostrating an apology for what it did earlier. It seems like Lu Luo has a good grasp of the situation. After receiving a threat to its life, Toot Toot's manners have become a lot more human-like. Upon closer look at the offerings, Lu Luo determined that they were not fruits. They are stem tubers. This might mean that Toot Toot transformed into a monster from a potato. While Li Chengyin recovered rapidly, she was busy peeling the offerings, looking for some that weren't affected by the herbicide. Spotting one promising piece, she decided to cut just a tiny portion out. She then proceeded to put the tiny piece into her mouth just to try it, much to Li Chengyin's horror. As she gnawed on the tiny portion, he hurriedly ran to her side, trying to make sure that it was not poisonous. It had a familiar taste, and it was edible. It would be better to cook it first. But other than that, it received Lu Luo's seal of approval. He was still worried about some fringe poison, though. If she feels the first sign of poisoning, he wouldn't hesitate to pour soil into her stomach to suck the poison out. He was so anxious, even though she did not even swallow. She had one more warning for Toot Toot. The plant would be barred from absorbing the nutrients on the ground so viciously. It can only do so if Li Cheng Yin consents. With how receptive Toot Toot was acting, this could also be considered a successful taming. He has another question for this greedy plant. He wanted to know what it absorbed from the bodies of those human dark ciders. It was a dark-colored substance, so we'll be referring to it as dark element. Fortunately, Toot Toot has some talents, too. It plucks a little ball's worth of dark elements out of thin air. Li Chengyin was pleased and immediately reached his hand out to inspect the dark element a little closer. The power from the little ball immediately dissolved and traveled into his body like a lightning bolt. He suddenly started hearing some unfamiliar voices talking all around them coming from above. They were talking about how the sunlight seemed to have changed recently and about an intruder coming in. Toot Toot kept on repeating its catchphrase, but Li Cheng Yin started to understand its speech pattern. Toot Toot was asking him if the dark element was tasty. It sounds like he can now understand the plants that are growing on his body now, his land. Is this the effect of the dark element? The flower explained that it does. The dark element changes dark ciders. It makes them stronger. Speaking of stronger, it looks like we'll just have to see now that an uninvited guest has crept into their position. Another dark cider with a body that looks like it's made up of wood in its entirety bursts into the scene. Lai Cheng Yin felt it coming from a mile away. He did not even bother turning around. He got eyes throughout the whole land that he occupied. The poor dark cider did not even get the chance to show off before getting impaled by multiple earth spears. Lu Luo did not notice the enemy making her jump from fright. He told her not to worry since the plants already told him about this dark cider in advance. After absorbing the dark element, his control and power over the land have increased exponentially. He only had three words for the poor dark cider who failed the sneak attack. Rest in peace. Manipulating the soil on the monster's feet, Li Cheng Yin essentially devoured Wood Guy and left no crumbs. From now on, another dark cider has become a permanent fertilizer to the land. As he tightened the grip from the underground, a menacing smoke formation started emerging into the air. He manipulated the loose power into his body. This confirms that the dark element is present inside every dark cider. Even if they are killed, the dark element does not disappear right away. This means that continuing to absorb dark element mist will make him inevitably stronger. This way, he and Luluo could have a much better chance of survival. She could finally breathe again. She was just concerned about his well-being. Seeing him in a daze, she thought that Toot Toot attacked him somehow. Speaking of Toot Toot, this thing has some opinions regarding Luluo too. People are supposed to be afraid of darksiders, but she's not. Since the flower was curious about how she could accept the current situation so easily, she tried to explain. It's just because she grew up playing in the soil. She's practically familiar with everything that's on a farm. Toot Toot proposed the idea of sharing dark elements with Li Cheng Yin so they could coexist. The little flower is already on par with humans in the intelligence department. Maybe it's because it already absorbed plenty of juice from darksiders. Toot Toot doesn't like being touched, though. Cheng Yin approved the coexistence plan since he also has more control over the nutrients on his ground now. But before that, he needed to know something first. 
He asked Toot Toot where the tiny ball of dark element came from earlier. It immediately answered that it came from the light, like it was common sense. Under the perpetual shine of the eclipse in the sky, there's plenty of light to go around. The duo was only realizing now that the eclipse had something to do with this mysterious dark element. He immediately instructed Lu Luo to quickly hide in the shade of a tree, away from light. Thankfully, she had been staying in the shadows while on the run, if this was the case. The transformation of humanity was not just a single occurrence. It was a constant occurrence that's been happening even now. That mysterious eternal eclipse is the key to understanding the apocalypse and the existence of the energy source for the Darksiders' growing strength. Lulo had been getting more and more accustomed to the life of living on top of Li Chung-Yin. She had been exploring the land itself and the surrounding areas around it. Today, she was excited to bring him into an area where traces of cultivation from before had remained. Li Chung-Yin was not doing so hot, though. He was still not accustomed to living life as the land itself. Toot Toot has been tagging along with the duo everywhere. The flower has seen soil being washed away, but it's not every day that you see a piece of land moving. Also, he's getting quite irritated that this plant was using him as its ride. Although he got transformed into a decent-sized piece of land, he could only walk around a limited area, any further, and he would get blocked by a mysterious obstruction. If he wants to leave the limited range, he'll have to slowly and manually push his soil out and spread it forward. Those places that he moved through will then get assimilated as a part of him. Lulo has been left in charge of analyzing the surrounding land. The spot they picked today has decent soil quality, safe terrain, and there is an accessible source of water they can tap into. She was determined to make this perimeter into the long-term refuge of the group. Lei Chung in smiled. The young lady sure knows her stuff. There's no reason to doubt her judgment at all, so he agreed. Suddenly, he started sensing something odd nearby. A speck of pink light has attached itself to Lu Luo. It was so small, nearly imperceptible. It's a tiny particle of dark element. He gently took the fragment out of her shirt and reminded her that there is not enough protection from the sunlight. Luluo must be cognizant to not stray too far away from him. This is at the core of their agreement after all. Li Cheng Yin doesn't want to see her transform into a monster like him because of the dark element. She got flustered after hearing that. Luluo does not like it when he refers to himself as a monster. He has always been a human in her eyes. Toot Toot just quietly watched the bizarre human interaction not understanding the subtext of what the two were saying. You can't expect a leguminous plant to comprehend human emotions. Lulo awkwardly changed the subject and presented the seeds that she thinks should go on the ground first. In her supplies, these are the valuable, fast-growing edible crops. Securing a supply of food is one of the most important things to do to survive after. Planting the seeds could be left for Li Cheng Yin to take care of. He took the seeds to his hand and started coating them with a moderate amount of dark element. Our boy has been expanding himself slowly replacing the land under his feet. But before having full control over this land, testing out agriculture on himself would come first. Even though they were just seeds, he could feel their desire to grow and grow in suitable conditions. It was the same as before. Upon absorbing dark elements, he started to understand the thought of plant life. Still, it's unexpected that it would work on seeds too. Moreover, it's still a mystery, but he seems to be able to directly convey his thoughts to Flora too. After bathing the seeds with dark element, they started germinating right in the palm of his hands. Lulo was shocked to see that the growth was so fast. They just planted it a few moments ago, and it's already showing signs of life. Also, Li Chengyin doesn't feel strange at all, so this method should be all good. His theory was that after absorbing a decent amount of dark element, he was able to awaken this innate ability. For experimentation's sake, he used up all of his stored dark element and transformed it into a power that increases plant growth. He did it all intuitively. All of a sudden, Toot Toot was trying to get his attention. He had no idea what was going on. It turned out that the flower just wanted some nurturing touch too. Li Ching Yin wasn't completely opposed to the idea of that. But unless Toot Toot completely listens to his orders, the flower could keep on dreaming. There's no such thing as free lunch, and there's also no such thing as free nurturing. It bowed once again. This flower dark cider can really adapt to whatever circumstances it goes through. The first time that Lu Luo saw Toot Toot, she already felt that this thing could understand human nature. Since the eclipse has brought along the emergence of dark element, Li Cheng Yin has been on a mission to spread out his land, practice, increase land mass, and absorb dark elements. The power from the dark gives him a constant supply of special energy, a type of energy that can be transformed into positive effects. Through this wonderfully virtuous cycle, Ling Cheng Yin managed to cultivate a successful farmland. This was the most joyful thing that happened to him after his chance encounter with Lu Luo. He says that to himself, but deep inside, he knew that this was nothing but self-motivation in the middle of an apocalypse. Another idea came to mind. If his land can protect humans, then he'll also be able to have a taste of his previous human life. 
Deep inside, Li Chung Yin just wanted to turn back to a normal human. In this current world of monsters and mutations, maybe a method to turn back time exists. Those are lofty ideas, though. Toot Toot has been tailing him nonstop since they first got introduced. He asked the flower if it doesn't like being together with its own kind. Instead of answering, Toot Toot just alarmed him to the fact that there's a nearby activity coming from humans, real humans, like Lu Luo. Of course, Li Cheng Yin was shocked. This was big news. But Toot Toot also mentioned that there's a large group of dark element holders in the area, and they are moving. The human activity mentioned was coming from a group of three people fleeing through the woods, getting chased by Darksiders. This Darksider is not one I would like to mess with. It has evolved to have several protrusions made of sharp blades all over its body. The humans were starting to experience fatigue. They've been running for their lives for a long time now. But screaming and whining will only lure out even more Darksiders. A dependable-looking guy led the group of three. He blamed the pink-haired lady, Liu Feng Yuan, for insisting on coming back to find Lu Luo after receiving a distress message. Ching Wen the dependable guy was quite insensitive, but he has a point. Glass's nerd boy was starting to slow down. The blade dark cider was already hot in his literal heels and closing in faster and faster. Then he made a mistake. Glasses looked behind him and was frightened by the prospect of getting cut and diced into minced meat. A momentary distraction made the dark cider swing its blade, but it luckily missed Glassboy's leg by an inch. The first swipe did not land, but the next one might since Glassboy has tripped and planted his face into the ground. Chung Jun the Glassboy was pretty much done for at that point. His friend couldn't possibly do anything to help him, right? As the blade dark cider lunges forward to do its thing, Chung Jun was already saying his prayers as he was certain that this was it. He's really done for. Liu Feng Yuan and Ching Wen watched helplessly as their friend was about to knock on heaven's door. But just as the tip of the blade was about to carve up the nerd's face, it stopped. In fact, the Darksider's entire body has been frozen. It turned its head to the side after sensing the one responsible for stopping the blade. Li Chung Yin quietly manipulated the land to grab a hold onto the monster's leg. He also overheard the humans mentioning Lu Luo earlier. Maybe they have some sort of connection to the young lady. There's only one way to find out. He needs to save them.